What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dicky Dines podcast. Today we have a very special episode for you. It is the entirety of Grasshopper. They were on musician Mansion, Anthony Vincent, Jimena Fasado, Rudy Ayub, Sunfire, and Drusif. Is that his name? Drusif. <laughs> Or Andrew, whatever. We like to call him Drusif <laughs> yeah, around cut here. Cut that part out. It's <laughs> like that being known. So, uh, yeah, they were on Music Mansion, Grasshopper, and we will be doing a little podcast with them, asking them questions, talking about their experience, uh, what they learned, anything they didn't like or they liked, you know, all that kind of stuff, all that podcasty kind of stuff. Got a lyrical breakdown from Anthony. Yeah, yeah, a lot of insight about uh, things that they learned um, as musicians. It's, it's, it's always really cool, like, I don't know, talking to different uh, personalities and people that are in different points in their life mm-hmm. musically and to, to kind of see, like, how that experience affected yeah. them and if it did at all you know so before we get into that i want to let you guys know that you can go to our patreon and you can sign up and you can help support us to keep this going i think we have like 210 signups already and if we get to 250 <laughs> so close. me and austin will drop a single sure we will drop a heavy banger that's exciting we'll release it we'll have austin on vocals i'll write it mix it master it we'll drop it we'll release it we'll send it all out to you guys and uh yeah so we get 250 that will be our goal um and then we'll put more music out i don't know if you ever saw our old keelan alif ep that we did a long time ago pretty cool it will be essentially that only a lot higher quality because i'm better at recording now than i was back then but anyways you can go uh support us on patreon help keep the lights on we really do appreciate it also we have merch in the link in the description below if you want to get yourself a dicky dying shirt for you or a loved one for the holidays you can go and do that um but yeah without further ado we have grasshopper waiting and uh let's get right into the podcast let's give everybody his third favorite band let's give it up <laughs> All right, what is up, Grasshopper? Welcome to the Dicky Dines Show podcast. Woo. Long time no see. Glad to have you all here. Uh, been missing you guys. So, first of all, you guys have a song coming out, which is the official recorded version oh, let's go. of your song you did at the mansion, correct? And it is called yes. Free at Last. That's right. And this was mixed by you, Joseph, correct? It was me. It was Joseph. Hell yeah. And this is coming out tomorrow on yes. all streaming services. You can check it out. Spotify, Apple, whatever. You can pre-save Probably it Probably not now. tomorrow whenever this happens. Well, well November 21st. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday. It came November out, 21st. Yes. <laughs> it came out yesterday. Um, November 21st. Very cool. I'm very excited. I haven't even heard it yet, so I'm really excited to hear it. Obviously, oh. I've only heard the live version, um, so I'm very, very excited to hear that. Um, so I have a few questions for you guys, and I guess we could just go down the list, start with Amena, go to Anthony and Son and Rudy and so on, just uh, to keep it streamlined. Um, so what has been, what was a positive takeaway from your experience at the mansion? Uh, also, what was your favorite moment and what was your least favorite moment? The mayo. The mayo! <laughs> The mayo. I like it already. So ominous. Everybody knows. Um, the mayo. It's like a funny thing that we got in the group chat for the ones that don't know. Uh, it's always like the mayo, like randomly. I can literally the wake mayo. up to a message that's like the mayo. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> They're going to say you wake up with the taste of it in your mouth. Oh my really? God, no. <laughs> Cold sweats. That, that would be awful. Um, I think that's. <laughs> Other than that, everything Keep was... Keep a tongue scraper next to your bed. And- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. The night yeah. It's really yeah. funny because the when we were talking to uh, Justin, he got the Vienna sausages. And when we were talking to him, he said that his like childhood trauma food is sausages, like hot dogs, which is what he got. <laughs> And then you, the only other person, <laughs> yeah, the only other person that said that the one thing that you didn't like were like condiments, like mayonnaise, you know, ketchup yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You got the mayo, like so, right. and the which mayo. was not planned whatsoever. But yeah. it was just funny that it's you both like got your. Funny. 
totally. Yeah. Uh, but it, it definitely added like a cool memory that we're always like gonna, you know, remember and share. Uh, I have so many favorite moments though. Like it sounds like corny and stuff, but like it was just like a nice relationship that we built with each other. And it's like, like the way that we bonded and like, it's just something I do appreciate a lot. Just also, I think it helped me to be inspired in other ways. I wasn't, you know, cause I've been focusing on touring all the time. And like, I always leave sometimes content behind and sure. I try to push it with my tour stuff. So it's always regarding touring, but it kind of helped me to like broaden and like, just, have other ideas to you know uh add to my kind of my plan already so it definitely helped that's okay. awesome I'm glad to hear that what yeah. about you what about you anthony uh one of my favorite i think my favorite memories of the whole experience was just like all the random uh music that was going on the singing like you'd have like different you'd have you know, Joseph would just start saying something, singing something random, then it would turn into a three-part harmony <laughs> in some room someplace. Then you hear, like, in the distant, in the distance, you hear, like, a a, a, a blood-curdling scream. <laughs> death, death core shit all over the place, and then there's death just, like, them. random harmonies over here, and then there's all these different jam sessions. You hear, like, this, like, um you know, Joe Satriani type guitar playing in one room and it's, it's like angels jamming for two hours with so-and-so and and then everyone's swapping players. That was really cool to be in that, that environment is not something that I'm, I can't say I'm in ever, Sure. you know? So it was like, uh, you know, I didn't expect, you don't know until you're there, you know, (laughs) how, how like awesome of uh, an environment it is. Um, I'd say my least favorite was, the busking and mm. it, it was because not so much that well partially because i i i'm not i don't do that shit so it was uncomfortable so that's not necessarily a bad thing you know? <laughs> it's not a bad thing but i was uncomfortable like because mm-hmm. and, and then i realized damn like i i started getting all in my head and i'm like you fucking you don't even know any songs you don't know shit you like i started to kind of like beat myself up i'm like hey, how do you call yourself a singer if you uh-huh. don't even have a Rolodex of songs in your head to go to. But the, the thing that I was on, the, what sucked about the busking was the fact that they have no place in Seattle. There's no bathrooms. Mm. Uh-huh. No, oh, yeah, the public. So bathroom. I had yeah. this the entire time. <laughs> it's because of all the homeless people. Yeah. Yeah. We went to go walk to find some place to piss. And, and we just basically, <laughs> you know, took a walk and we still yeah. didn't find a place to piss. Dude, we still we had hiked. Piss. Damn. Right. Yeah, I just so, tore my shirt and roughed up my hair and peed in the train stop. <laughs> <laughs> just fit right there in. So that's that's kind of funny or interesting to hear you say that, Anthony, because I would feel like for the busking challenge, anyone, you would be the guy that has that that voice, that singing power that, you know, like Justin was kind of uh, I know. had a little beef with you about the Chris <laughs> Cornell, the Seattle style <laughs> grunge voice. Um, and then you have Austin who's doing deathcore screams, who's like, you know, just completely uh, scared he's pissing people off by doing like screams, but then you can actually like really sing. So that's interesting to hear that you still had the same level of um, trouble or, you know, like like uncomfortableness. Objectively, I would think think that that seeing, uh, since, since busking is such a common thing, like, objectively seeing a, a group of people doing something as absurd as acoustic deathcore is more entertaining than seeing <laughs> a guy just sing grunge songs. You know That's what I mean? I mean? It's Seattle. How many people go on the street to sing uh, Alice in Chains and Soundgarden? I'm pretty sure a lot of people in, in history have done that. <laughs> But That's then again, fair. I wasn't even doing that. I don't even it, know though. those songs. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, you and I should have so met up on the busking day to help each other out emotionally. Because I, no, I think it was funny. I should have your mindset with the. This is a, a, an event. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, well, Justin was talking shit about me doing like uh, '90s songs and stuff. We weren't even doing that because I don't even know any <laughs> '90s songs. Right. I know it's gonna be funny to see <laughs> in post Justin having a beef with you that you didn't know you had. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was laughing. I was looking at. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> oh, man. 
That's really funny. What about you, son? What was your favorite moment, least favorite moment? So like Anthony said, there is so much going on, like jamming wise in different genres. Um, I'm not used to playing heavy. Like, I mean, I do take a lot of requests on my on my streams on Twitch. Like I do grunge, I do pop, I do new metal, metal, proggy stuff. And then like, I don't play a lot of deathcore. So I was like, oh, this is really cool to see it in front of me being like produced by or just in front of me being screamed at me by Justin and Austin, both of mm -hmm. you guys are hilarious on on stage. I was like, I never listened to Deathcore, but watching you guys made me appreciate the genre. And I never listened to like that sort of heavy music. So to me, I was like introduced to all these genres. Um, also, the bands were also different. Like our band is like the most like, I guess it's friendlier for everybody, like most audiences, because my dad's not going to listen to great, great stone. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't, he liked, okay. Sky limit was more like evanescency, like Hannah said. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different genres. And so that's why I was really enjoying our differences as bands. So that was my most favorite moment to see that how everybody's so different, but everybody got along so well. Um, yeah, least favorite moment was probably the the roasts because I'm not very good at just getting on the podium and saying roasts. <laughs> um, right. Drusiv was the only one <laughs> that was good at it out of all. <laughs> <laughs> all of us struggled except Drew. <laughs> yeah, uh... it was tough. Like writing, it. I mean, I I knew the task was to make Jared laugh, so I should have just stuck to like my stupid personality. Should have and... just tickled him. <laughs> <laughs> but i was trying to be like okay i gotta say this and make him laugh but no i should have just done my dumb shit that i do on stream maybe that would have worked better no your roast was, was the best roast against nick nocturnal oh my yeah. god yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the, best. the only the only twin he streamer offended. here is me <laughs> Is that I didn't Nick's even, like, was like, I didn't what? even mean to say that to him. Yeah. I just forgot. That's why it was so funny. <laughs> That's an even better roast. You're like, I literally forgot was you it, even was it intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you didn't even realize. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Yeah, that's what made it so funny. Um, did you find that because like a lot of what you do is, you know, like on Twitch, obviously. So you're kind of in your room. Uh, you're not in front of people in person they're obviously the chat and it's a little bit different um and you always do stuff by yourself you know when you're mm -hmm. drumming and so you kind of do your own thing uh was it difficult for you to kind of come into a situation where the, it was completely different there was no chat there was no nothing it was just you and a bunch of other musicians trying to make music and do challenges was that a lot of fun for you was it hard for you being so yeah. different than than what it what you're used to Yes and no, because I was in an environment that we all make content and we can all like we're all silly. We're not like serious YouTubers like and like the average Joe will not understand like my silly, dumb goofs and code and stuff. But sure. you guys, I could I was able to just dance and jump and scream and like around you guys at the mansion and make my videos. And I mean, yes, I was kind of scared because I didn't know you guys in person, but I was just like, we're all here. We're all goofy inside. Nobody's going to judge. Or maybe right. they were some at first the pro some people might have been like, What is going on? Like me and Jimena no, did a thing in front of everybody where it was just like the <laughs> oh Coco song. God. And then I'm pretty sure somebody was like, What the fuck's going on? Why are they yeah. doing that? <laughs> so I just was like, yeah. I don't know. I get more into this men mentality where I'm like, just have fun and make goofy content and just who cares what people think about you? Right. Because then it makes yeah. those people become more like you know, carefree. Oh, she's doing this. Like, oh, I've always wanted to be that silly, but I just overthink what people think about me. Yeah, it helps to bring people's walls down, right? Like, they don't mean to interrupt you, but like... Yeah, no, it's cool, yeah. I want people to feel like they're free to be goofy whenever they want, so I just, like, let myself go. And then I was just shy sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then I wasn't, so it was like, it's weird, because the vlogs do show my crazier side, but when I'm on the show, I'm more like, okay, Right. <laughs> just listening to what you're saying right <laughs> right the shy yeah. thing it, it, you talked about that a little bit anthony where you said that it took you about five days for you to kind of warm up and come out of your shell and that you were actually kind of sad that it wasn't longer because by the time we left right. you had then started to feel really comfortable and start you know to wanting to like you know yeah, what i mean yeah I, I i i had like this kind of like 
block. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not a, I, I could be it, depending on, on how comfortable I am. I could be, uh, extroverted, but in this particular case, I was a lot more introverted than I had anticipated. Um, sure. yeah, I definitely felt very, um, very just shy and, and boring the whole time <laughs> compared Why to what I really want? am, because I, I could be animated when I'm by myself. Yeah, uh -huh. like and I'm, if I'm with people that I've known for years too. Yeah, for so, sure. So I mean, it's a, it's it took me a little, while, but I mean, I was getting there. But yeah, by the time that, like I said, like like you just said, by the time it's time to go, I mean, you're there for several days. Like you're starting to build rapports, then it's just like before you know, it, it's time to go home. Right. Right. Uh, Rudy, what was your favorite uh, moment from your week at the mansion and your least favorite moment? I liked, you know, when you meet someone new, like a friend, there's a honeymoon period where you get to know each other, you get more comfortable. It was that with 14 people over five days. It was nice seeing it unravel in real time, not just for me, but for everyone there, like everyone's relationships. You can see progressively how people started getting more comfortable, like talking about stuff, just being themselves. It was really nice to see that 14 times <laughs> over five days. <laughs> Um, I think my least favorite moment was just getting injured during the yeah. balls. But you know, that's the price of being. Yeah, I say, <laughs> you, you went, you went so hard. I would say sturdy, very sturdy. Yeah, I think Turtle you, man. I mean, I was, I was on the ground. You, bro, that's what I mean, like, sturdy. Yes. I couldn't move you. Well, turtle, turtle it, it was form. it was kind of fucked up because he had won four or five in a row, and then he had to face you. Mm -hmm. You got a little break. He got a little break. Got a little break. Yeah, I got like 15 Mine's minutes, but still. Yeah. Um, but still, that was, yeah, definitely MVP of the balls. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, sure. I think next time we should just all just punch Rudy in the back for like the hour that the thing happened. Yeah, I was saying that when Rudy first got in here, I was like, I'm down for the rematch as long as you had just ran a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, the only reason you won is because I was like, I'm about yeah. to faint. Right. Yeah, I think everyone could tell how, because of the times you were falling over, <laughs> over and over again. That man looks like he's about to faint. Yeah. I think everyone who watched the show 100% knows you are the king of the ball challenge for sure. You're king of the ball? We just, just, we just need to put it out there. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because you you were like crazy strong for that. And then you when you got to the food stuff, you took like a little little, you know, Lick up the wasabi. I have my, I have like, my reasons. No, well, I have my reasons. It. Well, it's just funny because like that's that's the I, same thing with Justin because Justin was like he did the front flip to smash the guitar and then he was crazy in the pits but then he got taken out by Vienna sausages. It's just <laughs> he ate them though. Like he did he did he did a lot with the sausages. It's just really funny like people's different uh, you know their their limits. Yeah, limits hundred percent for sure. Well, we know that one group. We know what their limit yeah. is. <laughs> is, is My gonna, limit? Yeah, yeah. We don't talk. We don't talk about them. Um, <laughs> Rudy, I was gonna them. ask. I was gonna ask Jeez. you how close were you to throwing hands when you got back from the bus college? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> and they won. Yeah. And then you were just like, "Hold on, <laughs> I heard what happened." Like, what was going through your mind? Because the story. Cause we didn't have a clue. Like when me and angel were, you know, talking to you guys, we didn't know. And so then we hear, Oh, this person, this church group gave you all the money and we heard different stories. And then you heard this. And then the truth was like totally different. It was interesting. It was, I just heard what I heard from um, Kevin, I believe. Yeah. About, about the church group. That's all I heard. Church group gave them money to sing, and that's all the money right. they made. And I was jealous of that because they just got lucky. I thought it was just luck for them. <laughs> that's why I was angry because they got way yeah. luckier. And the real, the truth was way <laughs> worse. <laughs> and I saw it, dude. I saw, <laughs> I saw the disbelief in my own face on the show. I, I was so confused. I'm glad that that happened. Like the length they went. Yeah. I'm glad it happened, yeah. but like. Oh. Like, like Rudy said, oh, yeah, it just delayed our success. Our win got delayed just because they did that. But, yeah, no, I think that yeah. it was a good turntable. I think you show. guys yeah. needed that win. I think that win was oh, such a did. morale boost for you guys that you're yeah, like, oh, totally. we, we finally got one. We did it. Like, we can <laughs> do this. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's really funny. I honestly funny. think that one. the video 
the video would have been like neck and neck with Sky Limit if it, yeah. if it worked. Yeah. Yeah, that was such a bummer. We'll talk about it in a second. It was really funny though for the with the Sky Limit busting thing was that that I told them in the in the last podcast. I was like, yeah, so you had a, a Christian dude come and help you lie and cheat if he could tell you about God. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't seem like Make real, it make a sense. real crusader yeah. if I do say something. Yeah, I was just like, wait a minute. That's the least Christian thing ever. Like, here's money. He, I will Old help Testament you lie time. and cheat, but just hear me talk. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. for God. So random. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, Drusif, what about you? What was your, your favorite moment, least favorite moment? Mm. Uh, we'll it was really cool to see people. Moment. Oh, what? I think we know your least favorite moment. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the favorite moment was the egg for it. sure. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, I think my favorite thing was just like kind of uh, seeing all of these personalities exist as like human beings and not content machines. Mm hmm. Uh, seeing the the difference of of Bradley in person versus his content <laughs> is so like really real yeah. yeah yeah it's staggering, but yeah it was cool it's nice to it's nice to make some connections and also I guess you know like get some validation on we all struggle with the exact same thing and yeah uh, yeah I think just Rudy said saying it best. the algorithm over and over and going <laughs> rrr, rrr, the algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think i think rudy said it best when he said that you know we all have a bit of a facade you know i think it was in the confessionals where he said you know i have a facade you have a facade and it's, it's interesting to see 15 other people also having an internet facade that then you get to kind of experience them you know in person and you're like oh like this i'm not i'm not a weirdo like you know this is just Dude, it's, it's I love the way that you phrased it because it was it was like it's great to see that everybody else is fucking fake too. <laughs> it was so funny. That sounded dude. meaner. <laughs> that sounded meaner than I expected. That's one thing I was going to ask Rudy. So, in watching yourself back, did you were you playing any kind of like because I know you're a, a very deadpan sarcastic that's just your personality is like sarcastic deadpan kind of uh, person when you were like doing confessionals and stuff were you thinking like I'm going to lean into that or were you just 100 percent being yourself and then in watching it back do you think like the way that you intended it was maybe not how it came across or was it exactly how you wanted it to come across. It was it was mm -hmm. pretty accurate to how I wanted to come across. I knew I knew that I was leaning into it enough, but I knew that I was if I don't lean into it as much, then it wouldn't work. Like if I gave it breaks. But I wasn't faking a personality, mm -hmm. like that's just who I am. But I just was like no bullshit about it. Also like kind of an I lean into the asshole side right. of myself. Which is easy around you guys. <laughs> but essentially Aha! <laughs> See? This, is a, this is a good glimpse into the graph hopper practice <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. that was the joke yeah. some of the people in my comments were like is rudy like okay what's up with him like is rudy okay oh, i love <laughs> god betrayed him of course he's not okay i <laughs> love <laughs> yeah God took Sky Limit's side instead of Grasshoppers. I love the uh, the confessional, Rudy, where you're like, "Yeah, there will be a <laughs> the difficult the difficulties to overcome are not going to be within myself. <laughs> it's it's going to be everyone else's difficult." <laughs> it was so funny, man. Um, that kind of goes into the next question that I had, though. What was the most difficult thing for? you five as you know grasshopper to <laughs> overcome was it uh, maybe just like someone finding the leadership role uh someone kind of like leading the pack was there the personalities the songwriting um what what do you think was the hardest thing for you guys to kind of come together and overcome if you want Hamana, if you want to start do I really have to start? <laughs> I mean, I'm just going down the list, but whoever. Dude, 
okay, <laughs> let me just say, <laughs> like, I, I was very scared to, like, say what I want to make for the band to be or what the song should be. But I was just like, no, fuck it. I want to say what I want to say. And then everybody took it in a very open way. We kind of just talked about having the groove, having a song that is like, you know, catchy, yeah. memorable. Mm -hmm. And it became that. And I, I love our song. You can, I don't care what the Deathcore fans are saying <laughs> that it's soft and weak and not fucking heavy. I don't care, dude. Deathcore fans. We don't aren't care musicians. that you don't like it, okay? But our song is groovy <laughs> as fuck. And you can dance to it. You can still shake your ass to deathcore. I mean, That's we fun. wanted to make something different. That was the purpose of it. It didn't yeah. like show it like during the, the video, but we said that like we wanted something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you were telling me though, like like going into this, that that would be the song, the kind of song that we that I was going to be matched with. I would would not I would have, have thought so at all. Right. Yeah. Same. Yeah, same. same. yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I, and I because I'm down for anything. I was yeah. down for anything, but anything. I also didn't have a clear vision and I didn't feel like that was the time. I didn't want to come and say, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Or, you know, I didn't want to go say, we're going to go this style, this style. You know, like I figured it would have been, we're going to do this for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, you know what? <laughs> we got five hours to do this. We're going to, you know, let's just have a good time as yeah. much of a good time as possible. Um, and everyone had their 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 idea of what we should do. We're pretty much on the same page right off the gate, right out the gate, because we knew that everyone, we knew that the other two bands were going to be heavier. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and like you know, I think in a, a competition, it's better to it's better to have something like you know to set yourself aside, mm -hmm. especially when you know that the, the what that what everyone else is going to be doing for the most part. Like there was no right. way that Greystone was going to be anything but what they were. Sure. Yeah. Have, like you know, you know, like Nick and Justin and and Austin. I mean, forget about it. Um, and then, which I think you know, Jared did that on purpose. <laughs> totally right. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, like, Nick. Yeah, I wanted to together. see. I wanted to see Austin and Justin specifically. Austin and Justin together, and then the rest of them kind of just fell into place. Yeah, um, I just to wanted fair, to make though, like a winning team right off yeah. the bat. What did I say? You want a loser team so you can pick on so, them. Well, uh, so to be fair, it, I, I did want, like Anthony was saying, to have diversity. So I knew if there was yeah. going to be a heavy band that I would want it to be, you know, people who did heavy music and then like mix up everyone else to just kind of see how it works. Um, and then I think for like the next season, though, I've already been considering uh, doing the uh, or allowing the team captains to pick their teams instead of me picking them. So then there's nothing that is like, you know, oh, it's just biased or whatever. Cause I, you know, obviously I, that's not what I was intending to do. Um, and to be fair, I did see, I have been seeing a lot of comments. People really enjoy your guys' song. I think it, I, I'm excited to hear it. Uh, it comes out tomorrow or I guess by the time this podcast is out, it was yesterday. Um, in the writing of your song, did you feel <clears throat> that maybe, uh, and this kind of goes with the writing of the song and the filming of the music video. Did did you feel that you guys might have tried a little bit too much with the a lot of time that you had? So like in, in the song, you know, it has like multiple time changes. And, and when I was watching some of the footage when you guys were jamming it, you were doing three, four, 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 maybe some seven, eight, doesn't like kind of weird stuff going it. on. Um, and, and just kind of like maybe overshooting, <laughs> like like making it too difficult. And then the same thing with the. Uh, hey Rudy, what do you think? Hold, uh, oh, hold on. Then the same thing. The same thing with the music video when you were shooting in 6K uh, for the music video, and then you ended up kind of like messing up the computer because the footage was so you know big. So do you, in hindsight, I guess my question is, do you think? simplifying for the sake of simplicity would have been the way to go or are you still pretty happy with the way that you did everything i I'm think everything we did yeah i think yeah, everything it fell into place how it's supposed to i guess that's what you say like, it's just like it's supposed to be how it hindsight is always <laughs> yeah hindsight's 2023 dude no, yeah. no one well, I think exactly. Joseph, I don't know, but you should have checked your uh, your camera setting or did you do that on purpose? 
Oh yeah, I, I figured it would be funny yeah, if I made sure that we would lose the, the competition for that day. <laughs> Which to be fair is funny. That actually was hilarious. IPhone, that's it. Just iPhone. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm really happy with like the video. I didn't think. I don't think that we should or aimed for more than we should have. I think the video would have been like perfect. Hadn't that <laughs> minor detail of 6K. The rest would have been great. Like the ideas, everything was flowing. I mentioned it even on my vlogs. Like we were so happy with the results of, you know, I mean, with how we were throwing ideas and everything was coming together. And as we said before, or like Anthony said, it's not like imposing something or, oh, it's mandatory to do this. Like instead of answering the question of struggles, I would say, I would like to highlight how we became an actual team, just like, adding everybody's ideas. I think that was really comforting for each other and it just felt good, like uh, a good vibe. Sometimes oh, yeah. I, I think, I, I, I have thought like, you know, I like I wonder, um, thinking back, like did I not take the lyrical portion as seriously as I should? I mean, not to take it seriously, but I when you listen to like, Sky limits. So oh, Rudy's shaking his head. So he's saying, "No, you did. You did good." <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't listen to it, man. <laughs> I, actually I really was, enjoyed. Yeah. I really enjoyed the lyrical content. It, it was fun. It was fun, and that was the and thing. It was, it was you, bold. you guys were having fun with what you were doing, which is what obviously I wanted and what I wanted you guys to to experience. Um, I had a question for you, Anthony. So I had. Uh, you know, a, a lot of you the team captain, you know, as, as, as the singer or whatever, how was that for you? Did you feel that, uh, you came into that role well, smoothly? Did you find that there was maybe another emerging, uh, team captain or was it an all encompassing? You guys just worked really well together. How was that, uh, I think role we worked, for you. I think we worked well together, but I, I felt like a lot of the time that Rudy ended up becoming the, the, the team leader. Because like the he was doing the choreograph the the yeah. choreography, mm. you know, and then of course like the, the the third day he was like leading the whole ball thing, even though we didn't win that challenge. Um, and uh, I think you guys won. Yeah, I points. was. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> like because and and again, like I said, because I was a lot of the time I felt I felt pretty, you know, uh, shy throughout the 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 first few days. I didn't feel like a, a leader, you know, like I didn't feel like the leading role. Like I, like I wasn't, I, I, so it didn't, it didn't kind of like, I didn't feel like I really fit that part. Mm. Maybe, you know, as we went, I mean, I don't know if I, if, if we had a little more time together, I would have, you know, and I, I, cause I already thought of like ideas that could have been that, that I, I could have done differently if I were more in that role. But, you know, way after the time passed. But when right. I'm there, I usually, you know, like it just and if I'm not well, like, go ahead. I was going to say, but maybe like you not like being super up in front, like we're doing this, we're doing this, like you kind of allowed the whole team to become the entity of what it was. And so like people would take a leadership role in, in this section, you know, like, you know, Drusif would, OK, I'll do the yeah. edit. You know, even though maybe it didn't work out, he, he was like, I'll take care of it. I'll do it. And then Rudy helped, you know, and and Rudy did a bunch of stuff, too. And then obviously Rudy actually did well, like the whole it, yeah. edit just to I credit where credits to Rudy. Gotcha. Rudy nailed I it. I preferred it that way. I preferred it that way. I, I think I actually even told Rudy that I want, you know, I wanted him to take the reins with the video uh, and, and the, the, the direction of it and his uh, choreography, because I love the work that he does so much mm -hmm. with his uh with his horse song and the other songs that he does <laughs> desert cowboy. I'm like, okay, listen, if we get the, the, the director for desert cowboy on our video, there's no way that we're going to lose. Yeah. So, so I mean, <laughs> it's funny though, because credit. in the confessionals in the confessionals, I tried to, I tried to play this role and it didn't come across. Cause yeah, I, I guess like, I don't know, but maybe uh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of footage to use. So it doesn't surprise me that it was taken out, but I was trying to kind of like play this role of like this kind of like this confidence, you know, like I was like trying to be overconfident leader, but then I, yeah. but then I started to sneak in some, like I started to realize, started to become very insecure that, that Rudy started to take over as a leader. <laughs> and I was trying to be like this kind of like, you know, fuck Rudy type, 
type thing. Uh-huh. Right. It, it never, it didn't really come across, which is fine. I, you know, whatever. Yeah. It came across more that like you were a fan. Of me. <laughs> I know. Uh huh. I mean, I that's, did, which, is, which is better. Yeah, I than, did like, say in the confessionals, I hate you, but I don't, I don't hate you. Obviously, it was just because you were taking a lot of like control, and I was just like, yeah, fuck Rudy. No, but it is. Yeah. The thing is, like, it's hard because I'm, like, I'm kind of a snob when it comes to music and stuff. But I know that when I work on my own, that I can do whatever I want. And that's fine. When I'm with a group, which I don't normally do, I still have my vision and I still have my the things I want to do. But I know it doesn't align with them and their skills or like they have their skills fit a different vision. Right. So that's why I don't I don't like to take that much lead like with the song and stuff. How was it for you going to groups? bass? Because obviously, you know, you're a guitar player, very good guitar player, very jazz. And the and- decision that he made, by the way. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> was that was that something that that you genuinely were like, yeah, I'll play bass. I want to do that. That'd be fun. Or was it something that you're like, well, I'll fill this role because maybe the other guitar players don't want to. I kind of looked at it more as recently I've been enjoying playing bass. Also, I looked at it from the side of I will take it off their shoulders cuz I know like they wouldn't want right. to play bass. And I would enjoy it more. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. But also... Oh, kitty. Aww. Please pet that cat, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <there it> is. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. There's the serotonin, baby. Oh. He's a little feisty. Yeah, he's pretty feisty. Um, also, like, they didn't offer, which is kind of rude. So I was like, I'll be the higher person. <laughs> Damn. I'm not... I'm not... I mean, he is right. <laughs> Also, uh, Jared, how about you bring bassists? <laughs> Are they not like a category? Well, if I would have brought a bassist, then we wouldn't have been there. <laughs> there's three. There's three kidding. guitarists in this group. Right One's got to go. Yeah. One's got to go. I feel like um, I feel if, like either you or Drusif would have been a good good at uh, uh, for that position. Being a bassist, I think I've seen Drusif. I think he plays way better than me on bass. Well, Drusif, you actually played. Bass. That was the wrong button. <laughs> you have a hand button. Oh my god! I could have played bass and sang at the same time. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> so, Drew, if you actually do play bass in a band, yes, I so am a bassist it. in in Grey. Lo- well, enjoy it is a stretch. I would say. Okay. Uh, also, quite literally in the band, it's a stretch. It's really great. My guitarist writes everything in drop tuning, but I can't play in drop tuning, and he writes everything with a three fret stretch so i have a six fret stretch <laughs> oh no so it's great six frets uh, on the first fret it's pain but yeah uh i did not make the decision to make rudy play bass rudy made the decision himself i i believe i remember something along the lines of i would like to play bass and i said <laughs> okay <laughs> Which kind of like went along, I mean, with the sort of leadership role thing, there were like, Rudy just kind of was the dude stepping up. And I think the way that we all kind of worked together was just like, Rudy's going, hey, let's do this. And yeah, cool. Sounds good. But I did grab the bass (laughs) in hopes of uh, having a more, um, a different like song structure. Mm hmm. So I thought, like, I would do more in, on bass. I wanted to. Um, but that that would requ- require me to be like, okay, we're just going to play in this style. Because, like, why the fuck not? We were having a lot of fun. You were doing but your bassist, uh, like, dance, you know? Yeah, because I was enjoying the bass I was playing. I ended up playing a different Too one. Too bad live, the show didn't catch that. Which threw me off completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were dancing. Yeah, 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 it also did. Yeah. yeah. Thank there was a lot of we were I, dancing a lot. I, I wish there was more behind the scenes. I mean, wait, what yes. you guys put in the show works. It's cool, but there was a lot. Yeah, dude, of it dancing. sucks, bro. It's hard. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. It is very nice to watch yourself, and I will admit that. But when you're ha- when when you have like four cameras and each camera has five hours of footage, which is, you know, 20 to 23, 24 hours. And having to condense that to 30 or 40 minutes 
it's incredibly difficult to pick and choose which clips to leave in and which clips to take out because obviously the musicians and the and the guitar players and the drummers and stuff they want to see the jams which is also why i wanted you guys to do your own vlogs do your own content so we'd have the show and then afterwards they could go and watch all the jams which is you know which is exactly True. what happened um you know i mean i love your vlogs like you guys the stuff that and rudy and all your guys's content that you did there it's it's awesome um it was very difficult because there were a lot of really cool moments with you guys where you're coming up with the songs or you're having conversations or you're talking about personal stuff or you know things that you're overcoming or things that you don't want to do or whatever and there were just some things that were like, well, we already have, you know, 12 minutes of them, this part. And so it was like, ah, like, what do we do? So I think ideally, if we would have had a few more days, a bigger budget, we could have done more episodes. And then we could have really dived into like the personal aspect of you guys and like the music relationship that you all had. Um, but yeah, just in hindsight. And then so yeah, but no, I, I definitely agree. There there was a lot of stuff in in the footage that wasn't shown that I would have loved to, but you know, and it was it was tough because I was seeing obviously a lot of uh comments that said more music, more jams, um, more musical stuff like that, make longer episodes. And then I was seeing stuff where people were like, You probably could have cut this up and cut ten minutes out of each episode and made it more streamlined. So, you know, whatever way you go, you're gonna have right. an audience that has differing opinions, but um, but yeah, there was, there was a ton of good content. Um, <laughs> have you thought of releasing those kind of like clips for me? Like the stuff that was not on the show, like original things, like how like a director's cut together? or something or yeah, like an extended like, I cut. Would, I think people would love it, especially coming from your current channel. Mm, like yeah. just see like the response that they have, like they help. love the vlogs definitely, but or a gag reel. You, like, yeah, I'm mm. gonna have to go back to all the, like, uh, the, the footage you guys have and based. take like bloopers or something. I, mean, I just think it would be great for the audience. I actually think a really good idea. Someone said that I, I read a comment. Someone said for season two, um, and I think we talked about this in the group chat where everyone would have their own personal camera, and so then from each day, I would have essentially fifteen other cameras to pull from of your each personal moments and like personal experiences which is <laughs> just which a is, room full of hard drives dude yeah i was gonna say <laughs> it's like my nightmare to, to think about having to like edit 20 cameras down into something but you might you know if we did do something like that it would capture a lot more of those personal moments you know like jam sessions uh you know whatever um so definitely things that obviously learning learning experience uh hindsight's 2020 you know um and hopefully next year we can do it again bigger and better um drusif i was going to ask you i think so, we should talk about it the egg the egg the dude egg. do you so what was that like for you and i i have had it before i me and austin have both like taken at least a, a chunk like a bite of it it's not pleasant and you just you just scarfed it and it was very i impressive. am in fact almost gagging again right yeah now. every single time <laughs> i like remember it it just all comes flooding back but you know yeah i think really the worst funny. part is like the little bits of the egg that stay in your teeth that oh, like, was, what was the flavor? Like, give me a palette of flavors. Like, if it, like, what was? There's that? no palette, dude. It is distilled farts, and that's it. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> like old. Oh man! Like, it, like if you took a, a a crab from the bottom of the ocean and you just put it in a little box and you farted on the crab for like a year. Cause it's like, it's like really salty too. Like it was, dude. It was fucking gross, man. Well, oh I think everyone had a lot of respect for you for doing that, and you were definitely the MVP of the food challenge. And it was really funny. There was a clip of you afterwards, and unfortunately, we couldn't use it because it was so loud and so much other people talking and noise around it. <laughs> But you essentially were were saying how how hard it was, how gross it was, and you were explaining it, and then you pause, and then you say, and then we lost. 
<laughs> yeah. So you didn't even have to eat it. Yep. Like you, you know, I think there's yeah. somewhere. I mean, I did leaning over the camera and saying that to to one of the cameras of like he doesn't have to eat this right. There's this won't even equal the points to win. <laughs> 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 I did it. I was like, you girl mouth go hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I did though. Like it, yeah, it had for, the for the content. Yeah, for yeah, the it, vine, man. you baby. it. Um, <laughs> thanks, dude. Yeah, I'm really proud that that's what I was good at on the music show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 the guitar, the bassist on guitar, who ate an egg. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here's a question for everybody. Uh, if so everyone at the mansion, if you could include one person that was at the mansion that was not in Grasshopper that you would want in Grasshopper, who do you think would be a cool addition to the team? You all would still be in it, but add one person from the mansion. Who would you want to have in Grasshopper? I think I just went straight to Lauren because I think her vocals would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty melodic. Like she, she ambitions things. Like Lauren with Anthony with yeah. the eyes. Yeah. So just for the sake of not agreeing with everyone else, uh, <laughs> Angel. <laughs> That's what I thought it too, actually. No. <laughs> no. Fuck Angel. You guys in five will. Does he count, though? Because he wasn't in a band. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, you can you can pick him. I guess. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's a really hypothetical cool. question. Yeah. We're breaking the rules. You can't pick because he's because he's like really you know he also like goes with all different styles and shit. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he would fit. He would fit in well. I'm, I'm curious. Jared to, in our band. Like I'm actually curious to see what we would come up with again if we mm. had to do another. I think that we'd come up with something slightly different. Totally. Yeah, I feel yeah, like we're going to sure. be we're we're going to yeah. be a project that's going to do something different every time. I feel like if I did this again, I would add blast beats. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who the hell knows? Yeah. You already tried to add blast yeah, beats. Yeah, well, I did try. Nah, I don't know. I mean, I definitely wanted to add the toad scream, but that didn't come out in the final. So just add Austin then and do blast beats. With him. <laughs> yeah, Does I know. Sound good? This is your I gotta, hypothetical. I, I, I think it would be cool to, to play for for Graves, Gravestone, I said. Nice. Gravestone. <laughs> Mind Hunter. <laughs> Just catching strays this whole podcast. It's fun. Bah, 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 so that See, kinda... But I'm thinking too, like, you know, as far as another vocalist, uh yeah, I can I, I, I think I think working with, with Lauren would be really cool. Uh mm-hmm. because we would do so many different things. But I'd also think I, you know, even even Justin. Because yeah. as much yeah. of a, as much of as much as he's a great screamer, he's also a phenomenal vocalist as well. Mm-hmm. And to to that'd be that'd be interesting to kind of pair us because he can also rap, I can rap. Oh, yeah. We could do like interchangeable things. It could be kind of like so that'd be interesting too. Yeah, yeah. Plus the energy that well, he, he can brings. Play bass. <laughs> right. Yeah, or just like just a Rudy play. Or he could play bass. Yeah, he could play bass. <laughs> um, so this kind of segues into my next question is. <laughs> Will Grasshopper be doing more music? No! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on! I, I would love to. I, I, I tell them, I mean, I told them many times. I know everybody has their thing, everybody's busy, but I would love to do more stuff. Like, Anthony, dude, my husband says, you have to keep making music with Anthony. <laughs> and, like, I mean, everybody here is so talented. I love all of you guys. Yeah, hey, my husband said that, me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, send me some, uh, send me some instrumentals or whatever, and I'll just, I'll start writing some shit. Yeah, for sure. That goes to everybody. I mean, I would love to hear and it. I already have this. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it. As far, I thought, yeah. I thought we were doing it. I thought we were doing it. I would love to hear more grasshopper. No, like you guys were saying, I would love to hear what you guys could come up with, with, with more time and seeing like what you could do. And, my next question would be, do you feel that being outside of the environment where you're all together and doing songs, say, like all individually on your own and sending it via the Internet, do you think the vibe will change? Do you think without having that time restriction, the pressure, yeah. everyone in a room just yeah. jamming? Yeah, it's how, so much it, slower. Like, oh, it changes. Ask Drusive. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Drusive had to change a lot of things for the final song. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yeah, I get into that. Oh like, yeah, people, like so, I said, you know what happened? Busy. 
Uh-huh. You want to know, know what happened with the final song? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they made a whole group chat for Grasshopper that I was in. And like I'm like, I feel like I was half asleep the entire time that I was in this, this group chat because uh-huh. they were like, you know, um, sending the final mix back and forth. And I heard the mix that they did with. So so they asked, I guess they were having this conversation and I wasn't really paying attention about like <laughs> what? Yeah, for a whole week. About do uh, do you want to record your parts over? Because we all got our parts re recorded, and I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, and and Joseph said you you said that um you're like well maybe I don't know you should you should if because that second verse is just a bunch of gibberish, mm-hmm. and I, I then I heard it and I was like you know what this sounds fine ah, whatever, and then the, the then one day like I guess I finally just like woke up out of my stupor or my my this little <laughs> slump that I was in. I'm like you know what. I was like, I listened to it. I'm like, this sounds kind of uneven to me. Like, yeah. I mean, it sounds okay, but it's it. I was the only part that wasn't re-recorded, mm-hmm. and and I had a whole other second verse that wasn't that I didn't sing right mm-hmm. because when I did it live, I forgot all the words. So it I was, was basically- quite literally <laughs> already <laughs> uploaded to DistroKid. <laughs> <laughs> I got the email that was like, your song is now sent to stores. And like a second later, I got Anthony like, hey, uh, can we re-record this? <laughs> oh this is what I said. I, was, I said, I said, uh, do you think I could uh, re-record this for it? And you're like, dude. I'm like, all right. I said, listen, if it's if it's already in, we don't have to. It's okay. I said it was okay, but you said, you know, but we could do it. Then, then you gave me the option. I'm like, all right. I'm like, well, okay, yeah. then. Let's do it. All right. Why would you say that? If I'll we can overdo it, right it, we got to overdo it, man. Damn. So, I, no, I think the final is awesome. Guys, uh-huh. It's so good. I can't wait yeah. to for you guys to hear it. Yeah, I'm excited. yeah I haven't even it's heard cool. it yet. I'm very excited to hear it. I, I always thought it was a good cool yeah, song. Yeah, we did some, I know. Uh, a little something. We added yeah. a little something. A okay. little bit different. Some okay. Celine Dion choirs and shit. Okay. I'm very, very <laughs> excited to hear that. Added a little Beatle verse. <laughs> yeah, we actually uh, have a, a guest spot from John. Uh, whatever <laughs> John you want it to be from the Beatles. <laughs> whatever John. John Lennon. Yeah. John, John Lennon. Lennon. Wasn't there yeah, another John? No. Is there only one John, John and the Beatles? Oh There's a lot of Johns, Drew. So you should have just left it, John. <laughs> There's just a, yeah, we got a guest spot from John. John <laughs> Mayer's funniest to you in this scenario. <laughs> Some guy named John. Just of Baltimore. Are you Whichever John, John was. John? <laughs> we got a guest spot from John Wick on this song. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Well, I would love to hear more songs. I hope you guys actually do write some more songs. That would be really cool. Um, uh, one more question. So coming away from the mansion and, you know, being around so many creators and different talents, w- are there any new skills that you picked up um, and has the experience influenced your music or content approach in the future? I underestimated. Patience. Oh, sorry. Is the skill I picked up. You go ahead. I just said patience was the skill I picked <laughs> yes. up. Yes, that and like I underestimated like my uh, music making skills, and so I was like, "Oh shit, I can do this in five hours." I mean, not just. I mean, I definitely can't do it alone in five hours, or maybe, but the, all of us together did it in five hours. So by watching us do it together in five hours, I'm like, okay. I see what it takes, like patience for sure. Okay. I say just like it, it, to me, it, and this is kind of like a recurring theme that's been happening with me all year is just like uh, putting into practice of just like not beating things into a hole and letting things ride, which is very difficult for me to do. And 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 I I don't take my own advice a lot of the time, but I that's why you know I put it into practice. So being being in that. Uh, being in that environment, like, you know, just doing something in five hours and like, hey, we don't have time. This is what it is. And just accepting that this is how it came out. That's always like a valuable thing to put into practice. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Incredibly ironic, given <laughs> the, the release of the recorded song. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but hold on, but the, the, the final didn't sound much but... different than the than the, the live. True. That is true. Just that the I, I just like that that it was it was um recorded with, with my mic. You know, yeah. and yeah. the fact that we've got the, the, the second verse actually is not gibberish. <laughs> that's good. That's it was good plus. gibberish, yeah. man. Yeah. Rudy, what about I you? I like that the little Patience. cardboard lyric video we did that just has the question oh, mark yeah. and then Tation. That never <laughs> no one ever knew about that one. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. yeah we sh I showed that on my stream. The, the did you lyric really? Video. Yeah, I showed it on my stream. And the lyric video, everybody was laughing their asses off. This is amazing. Like, I don't know. It was just like different. Was, yeah, I ate like, leaves for that. Out. Yeah, you did. That was when we were beginning. trying desperately trying to meet the uh, the the deadline, despite the fact that the video right. was destroyed. So yeah. was that the one that was that the one Drusif that you said you had a different version, and Himana was like, "No, yes, no, yes. you're not." <laughs> he would not have it. He wouldn't have it. Yeah, no way. Yeah, I was like, I have a different version. I'm like, no. And... Yeah. yeah, I dude, I I think it would have still been fun. It would have been horrible, but uh, it would have been horrible. there. That, that freeze frame, the freeze frame, yeah. the freeze like, frame was, was so good. That was I like, so the part good. Was I like Rudy's, Rudy's like, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is so funny. You made, you made Kevin <laughs> almost pass out from right laughing so hard. I think he did pass out. Yeah, <laughs> Just we got him. Crucif. Okay, one more question for you guys. If you could change one thing about yes. your time together at the mansion, would you and what would it be? Anything Repeat the question? Yeah. If you could change one thing about your time together at the mansion, would you and if so, what would it be? Maybe it's just more time. Like, not not in the challenges themselves, but like hanging out like i do feel it was a short time like getting along with each other like five days i would have enjoyed it way more like at least another week yeah or yeah a couple of days but um i was yeah. thinking what about like uh, an, an hour uh, to make a song for i that would that would have been cool like another challenge like you got an hour so we just make a stupid ass <laughs> song in one hour that would have been okay, funny. Five minutes. 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> that would, we, we would have <laughs> you guys with <laughs> just yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, five minutes anything, to make a breakdown? If there yeah. was anything that I would I would say, like, as far as um, changing of what I, how I would uh, spend my time differently, I would have planned accordingly to do some of my, my own content like everyone else, because I didn't really do that shit. I didn't even right. take any behind the scenes footage. I, I mean, I did, but I took snippets like, you know, that, that I just, just, just to have, like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I barely did anything because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know. I, I, I was in this mindset that, you know, there's probably not going to be any time and we could just, and, and I'm just going to, you know, be a part of the experience there. But little did I know that going there, I'm like, ah, oh, I could have done this. I could, it was, a, I kind of felt like it was a little bit of a wasted opportunity. So if that, happens again you know i'll i'll be a little bit more prepared sure it was kind of like a trade-off on like productivity and connection though i found at least like yeah, yeah that's true that is you true could too. you could either be trying to make something or kind of experiencing the experience yeah. <laughs> with uh with everybody else and, yeah. and that was yeah Cause I felt exactly the same way, dude. I was like, I like, I even went in with like a couple of ideas and I just didn't do them. Cause I was just like, this is nice to exist. You know, the, the answer that I had earlier in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. It's nice to just exist and sit around and be with people instead of being on yeah. camera. Building yeah. things. Yeah. I hate being on camera, dude. <laughs> what? You're in the, you're in the right so profession. <laughs> What about it was you, cool. It was cool too. The, I mean, what, even the what, can you uh, zoom it? Man, oh, what a geez. great time! That was. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, yes. think I, I recorded a lot of things besides the vlogs, as I mentioned. Uh, I haven't had time to edit everything. I did a collab with Anthony. If that helps, that you did something. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah. Well, I did also yeah. one with Drusiv, and then I did one with Son. 
but I haven't edited. I haven't even finished episode five on my vlogs. So no, did you edit those? those? I did. Yeah. yeah, it took me a long. Damn. Time. Dude, I uploaded my stuff. Not a lot of editing, just raw footage. Mm-hmm. Like, like Rudy behind me and Jared That's talking, nice and Rudy's vlogs. just going. Yeah, I saw that. Like, yeah, if I could change anything, I think I would have been meaner to Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> like, I want you next time to yeah. just beat my yeah. ass, bro. <laughs> yeah, we should have just straight up, like, fisticuffs, dude. <laughs> we should have gone hard nice. with the, the fake beef thing. Good footage. Huh. Well, I like that there was no script, so thank you for that. What? But no scripts. I like that. So thank you for not d- writing scripts for us. Yeah, the freedom was nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I I definitely, you know, outside of the show, I wanted you guys to genuinely have a good time. And that was like first and foremost when I was thinking about doing this. Like, obviously, yes, I want to make a show. Like, we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for making the show. But I wanted everyone to come away from it just genuinely having a great time, hanging out, doing your own content if that's what you wanted meeting other people, collaborating, just like being in person, being in the moment. Um, so hopefully you guys all did have fun and uh, hopefully we can do it again next year, season two. Um, but yeah, uh, Grasshopper, thank you so much for joining us. It's been Thanks. very cool to see you all again. Song uh, came out yesterday or two days ago. <laughs> November 21st. <laughs> November 21st. Uh, Free at Last, the song by uh, the hit triple Grammy uh, nominated band Grasshopper. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Not nominated us. for three Grammys. Yeah, right. Specifically, it was nominated for a triple Grammy. <laughs> 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 Oh, baby, triple. Just <laughs> uh, hang tight with us, guys. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Is there anything <laughs> that you want to say before we finish? Oh. 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 Howard's turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I it. actually want to say something. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I got. Say it. I don't think anyone should like regret anything on the show because looking back, if you didn't do something you didn't like or if you didn't fuck up, you wouldn't learn from it. So now you have something to look forward to is doing things the way you want. Cool. Yeah. Going forward. Nicely said. Don't be agree. afraid you know to put yourself out there. Very nicely right. said. Yeah. Right, who, who cares what people think? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was generally because Anthony had this reaction. <laughs> You know, can, actually, him, can like you a, just say that again, just so that I can hear it like one more time? Eye contact. So if you look back ooh, at the show, ooh, I don't ooh, want you say to it quieter. Don't, you haven't turned him up. Okay, that's basically what he's saying. Don't have any regrets. Okay, in life, there's I'm no regrets. trying to have an experience here, I, Anthony. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Did I did I just interrupt? I think Rudy should do some ASMR content. Yeah. I think he'd be really good at it. ASM Rudy, <laughs> baby. Can you, can you do your dad character in ASMR? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Habibi, we're going that to cost Russia. money, bro. <laughs> I love it. That's expensive. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. See you later. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching that podcast with Grasshopper. And now let's get into the after show. 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 Cue the music. Cue the cue the cue ball. Cue the the cue. It's time for the after show. All right, everyone, this is the after show where we interact with our patrons over on Patreon. We answer your questions. We read your comments. And uh, yeah, so if you want to be part of the after show, go to our Patreon link in the description below and you could be a part of the after show and we will talk to you, get other perks as well. So uh, let's jump right into this. So Bill himself. Okay, Bill. He asks, have you ever pet a sheep? (laughs) <laughs> yeah yes i have it's, same yeah i, I have yeah. i think uh i feel like for farm animals that's probably one of the most pet animals <laughs> yeah yeah definitely have uh have pet to sheep before grew up on a farm 
So okay. it, you know, just e- easy makes, cheap access. Completely makes sense. Um, Cena Senna uh, says either of you guys got slash given up vices. You know, smoking, drinking, youthful blacking in malls, etc. <laughs> youthful blacking. Do we have vices or have we given up vices? Is the question essentially? Uh, I think it's a question for Kevin with the end of the flood of vices. <laughs> um, hmm, that's an interesting question. I mean, yeah, I definitely got vices. I, I I'd be ripping the vapes hard. Uh, yeah, I think, dude, I, in my early 20s, I think I was, like, in hindsight, probably an alcoholic. I drank <laughs> so fucking much, and I, I could drink so much. You like, could drink a lot. It, it was like those movie things where people would, you know, always brag about it, and then people would come up to me and be like, I do shot for shot, let's go right now. And then they would die because I could drink <laughs> so much. Like, they'd pass out and be gone. Like, their friends would have to take them home, and I'd yeah. be still party. Like, yeah. I, used to, I could put it a way. No, yeah, impressively. Like it, yeah. yeah. Impar- impressingly or embarrassingly. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely, now I just like, like casually drink when I'm yeah. like out at you know, shows or like with friends or something, but right. not nearly to the degree I used to. So that, that feels good to, to not feel like I got to get drunk all the time, but I definitely rip vapes hard. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the same thing, I guess the drinking, I, you mm-hmm. know, I, I like a drink, um, not so much anymore, but occasionally socially, yeah. Uh, but yeah, drinking, uh, cigarettes for me, uh, have been tough. I've quit a couple times, recently quit again. Um, so just trying to stay off of them. But yeah, mm-hmm. I would say nicotine is like the, probably yeah, one of the hardest things mm-hmm. that I've ever had to, to try to overcome and, and every single day overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, I would say those, that one's probably the biggest one. Um, you know, like I've definitely smoked pot. In the past, not mm-hmm. so much anymore. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like other, like maybe like the less normal vices. Yeah. Like, did everything weird I used to do that was like I had to get over and stop yeah, doing? I don't know. I don't know. No, hmm. I can't think of anything like weird. Um, I don't know. I'm, this, I mean, this is not the answer you were looking for. But when I was really young, uh, I just, I don't know. I always had this thing about just like not going to the bathroom. I would just hold it for as long as possible. <laughs> and like, it's like I thought I was like, dude, I'm going to train myself to like hold, like, like I'm going to go to bed having to pee and wake up and go pee. Like <laughs> just, I'm trying to build like a superpower. But what it would lead to is that sometimes if I had to like you go number two and I yeah. was hanging out with people, I'd just be like. Oh, what's uh, what's this? And I'd I'd sit on the ground like on my knees and just force myself not to feel like I had to shit. What? It was a strange. I would literally sit on my knees and like pretend like, oh, look at this. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Just sucking that shit back up (laughs) and just not allowing myself to fall victim to the toilet. (laughs) <laughs> I was I was very young when I did this, but I did it for a while. Like I remember doing it. <laughs> like, Interesting, huh? Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> very def- odd. It's an interesting vice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's why I was like. I don't know if this is a vice. Your but buttholes in a vice. Grip. It is something I overcame. <laughs> um, Troy RJ asks, "What games have y'all been playing lately?" Oh, I've been playing uh, Night of the Full Moon. It's a dope ass little deck builder roguelike game. Nice. It's very sick. Nice. I like roguelike games. You been playing anything new? Oh, you Zom- playing zombies? Been yeah. playing zombies, Modern Warfare Three zombies. I Hell actually yeah. really like it. It's fun because like I like Call of Duty, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's like too sweaty. Right. Yeah. But like with zombies, like you're getting scared with your boys. <laughs> yeah, like with zombies, you can kind of casually sit back and and just kind of play, and you don't have to sweat, sweat, sweat. Like you can. Mm-hmm. Like it gets hard if you want it to be hard. Right. Like if you go into like the hardest area, like the red circle, it can be really difficult. But you can also just stay on the outskirts and just kind of shoot zombies and mm-hmm. kill time so i'm playing that um obviously still you know playing apex every now and then and that's pretty much it smash whenever we smash. whenever we have our smash hangs um <clears throat> i think we already answered that question hold on let me uh let me see here don't mind me i'm gonna <laughs> sway jack charles wilkes says austin what's uncle tommy up to these days i uh i played the fifth <laughs> oh no not uncle tommy that's a throwback. Uncle Tommy's a throwback. Yeah, that's what he used to say to me, too. <laughs> Time for a throwback, Austin. Damn, dude. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Groundhog8366 says, uh, loving the revamp of the show. Hopefully I didn't read this one already. 
Uh, I've been watching for about three years, and it's great to see y'all back in full force. Here's my question. When you guys are writing music, either together or separately, what do you do for inspiration? Do you ever feel uninspired when writing a song? I like that last okay, part. Yeah. Do you ever feel uninspired when writing a song? I think that's a really good question. Yeah, this, yeah, I think this is definitely different from the other ones we've been asked. Uh, so part, our methods of like working with other people and then also separately, do we feel uninspired while writing? Yeah, I guess just like, are there moments where you're doing a song or just in, in general with mm -hmm. yourself or with someone else where you're just like, man. Yeah, to, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think, uh, like what her, causes her, that do you think? Probably fatigue. I yeah. think, I think over listening to something and like doing it for so long and putting a bunch of mental energy into it. I think you're doing yourself more harm sometimes trying to just like squeeze it out, you know, cause then you get like uninspired takes or like, oh, I just, oh, just want to get it done. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's happened to me a lot when, when tracking, like a lot of times I, I just feel the, the motivation all the way through, but there's definitely been times, especially with like more like, comedy related music. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I'll be halfway through it and, and I'll read it back. And I'm like, that's not fucking funny. And then I'll just like, I need right. to revisit this when I'm not tired or something. So yeah, I'll definitely re going over and then being like, Oh, that's not as sick as I had thought it was or right. overly being fatigued will definitely make me feel uninspired. Cause I'm just like, I can't even get, I can't think right now. I can't get the takes I want. And so, yeah, that, that feels, but I don't, yeah, not in like a more like grandiose sense, you know, right. I'm always wanting to do music. So this is actually a good follow-up question uh, by Matthew Williamson. And he says, how do you guys deal with self-criticism or fatigue when writing or producing music? Okay. That's interesting. That's a good question. Uh, well, I answer, I did the last one. Do you want to start with this one? Um, yeah, I think for me, like, how do I deal with self-criticism? I mean, I just, I'll be honest with myself for sure. Like if I write something and I'm just like, that's just not that good. Mm. Like, it's just not that good. So I'll just write something else. Like, cause there, I mean, it's okay to not write something interesting. It's okay to write something that you're like in your head, you kind of picture it being kind of cool. And then on paper, it's just kind of lame mm -hmm. and that's fine. And then just like, for me, I don't sit there and try and like mess with it for hours until it's cool. Just go to the I just thing. go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I'll just open a new project and put a new tempo down and just start something fresh. I'll just like, you know, cause I might come back to it eventually where I'll, think of the way to make it interesting or I'll just start writing something else. And I'm like, Oh, that's way cooler. Yeah. And then definitely. I'll just focus my time on that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, in, if I'm writing like in the span of a week, I could have 10 new song folders that have like 40 to 50, 60 seconds, mm -hmm. you know, each song. And then I'll do something. I'll go back. And like, once I have like eight, nine, 10 songs, like at least you know, up to like a minute, you know, intro verse riff or uh, intro verse chorus or something. I'll go back and I'll listen through like a week or two later when my brain kind of forgot yeah, about what now it, it's like a new thing. And, and so you can now, judge it now when I hear it, I'm not like thinking like as I was writing it, I think of it like as if I were to hear it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then I'm more honest on like, Oh, this fucking sucks. Right. Yeah. Or I'm like, Oh, that actually has like okay. potential, you know? Yeah. That's so that's solid. I like to just, just write, just, just pump shit out like mm -hmm. super fast. Just write as much as I can and do that for like a week or two and then go back, give myself time to separate myself from what I did mm -hmm. and then go back and listen to it again and then be like, okay, there is something here. Or like now I don't know what I was thinking when I did this. This is weird. Like mm -hmm. this is not, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so I guess that's how I deal with it is just like, uh, you know, giving it some time. Yeah. The self, the self criticism comes from when I go back mm -hmm. and I listen to it again. And then I just instantly know if it's like, this is sick or this sucks. Right. Yeah. You don't so, have that. Like I've been working on this for hours. Exactly. Like, I think it is tight. Exactly. Come back and you're like, what was I thinking? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you need that time away, I think mm -hmm. to like, forget about it. Yeah. And like, like work reset. on so much new stuff yeah. that by the time you go back to song one, it's like you've never heard it. You mm -hmm. don't even remember. And you're like, oh, that was sick. Dude, I've, I've done that with things before. I completely forgot about them and found like an old folder and played it. I'm like, this is tight. Yeah, <laughs> what, right? the, what was I thinking? Why is this not out? Right. Yeah, this is actually really cool. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. For sh more short term I fatigue, I guess uh, something like in the more recent years I've discovered is that if I just give my brain a different type of stimulation, it gives me like a creative break. And then I feel like, Oh, I actually kind of want to get back to doing that. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm feeling fatigued, like on music or something, maybe I'll go edit or I'll go play smash or I'll go for a drive or something, just do something just to get out of that moment. Yeah. And then come back. It's like a smaller version of that, I guess. And then 
your brain is now rewired to something else. So when you listen back to the music, you're like, oh yeah, okay, I'm excited again. Or right, I kind right. of forgot. I was just hard on myself because I was doing this for hours. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, there's some questions and comments from you all over on Patreon dot com slash dig dance show sure. thank you so much for uh leaving your co- your questions and your comments um if you want to be a part of the after show link in the description to patreon and we would love it and we would appreciate it your support so uh yeah without further ado here's my ass the naked picture of my ass here's the naked picture of austin's ass cue the intro cue the song cue the ass and song go it, get get hit get the out of here. Go to the go next away. Vi- the re- here's a recommended video, and maybe here's one. Not here though. You're still here. Go, dude. <laughs>